Andrei Karapetian here at Violin Outside the Box with Dr. K. And today uh, we're going to talk about tone quality, one of the most important things that makes or breaks a violinist. So if you guys want to get uh, a beautiful sound, beautiful tone on the violin, here is the secret. You go and buy a $9 million Stradivarius violin and then pay about $100,000 for a fantastic pickup bow. And you're set. The fiddle and the bow will do it by themselves. If you don't have the money though, you might need to put up some work. So uh, I think there are three main components that contribute to the um, production of a good tone on the violin. Uh, one of them is the weight of the bow, and weight of the arm on the bow. More weight, more sound, I guess. Uh, the other one is the speed of the bow, more speed, more resonance there is. Uh, and then the third is location of the bow. Um, if, if you're closer to the bridge, you get a more textured sound. If you are a little further from the bridge, it's more kind of ethereal sound. And um, uh, it's the correct balance between these three that gives it a really beautiful uh, tone of the violin. So the next thing is your bow hold. You should be comfortable and better relaxed and balanced. Most violinists today prefer the uh, so-called Franco-Belgian bow hold where uh, your thumb is in front of the middle finger and the ring finger, yeah, uh, and the index finger. You know, we're holding the bow with the middle phalanx of the index finger. Uh, sometimes the front, you know, the, the, the top phalanx, if you have really big hands and, and strong fingers, but most of the people, it's, it's really the middle, middle joint. Um, if you move it forward and hold the bow with the base balance, you know, this first part of the finger, uh, then it's becoming more like the, the so-called old Russian bow hold, which is not really Russian, but we're not going to go into that. That's a topic for a different video. So um, if, you're, if you have a balanced bow hold and you're not squeezing, uh, then uh, next step is... I would suggest, I would recommend playing long bow strokes, trying to produce a more or less, you know, agreeable sound on the violin. and then up, and then down again, then up again. Uh, what I actually do sometimes, well, when, I, when I'm not playing stro you know, bow strokes that are that long, but rather about six or seven seconds, I try to breathe with it. So um, a down bow will be an exhaling movement that really relaxes my muscles too and makes it much easier to manipulate the bow. Let's try it. I can almost feel like my shoulder just dropping, the weight just dropping, which is a really good feeling, really relaxed and balanced feeling. And on the up bow, inhaling. I'm a little more aware of what my body is doing this way. And it's just a very good exercise to get rid of any extra tension that might accumulate. So that's the first thing that contributes to the good bow uh, uh, good sound, I think, being able to control the bow in slow bow strokes. Uh, obviously, your bow should be more or less parallel to the bridge, yeah? So, when you're playing, I would recommend using a mirror to see whether the bow is parallel or not because it can be deceptive. The bridge is crooked and sometimes you might think you're playing uh, you are drawing the bow parallel to the bridge or perpendicular to the strings, but it might not be the case. So uh, when you use a mirror, you immediately see what's happening there. There is an exercise uh, that makes it easier to do parallel bows if you're a beginner or if you are, you know, intermediate violinist. If you just hold the bow with these two fingers, thumb and just the middle finger, and start playing from the balance point, from, from like this point down, yeah, like this. With most people, um, 
if you are moving the bow in a wrong way, like back too, too much, then the strength of your middle finger alone is not enough to keep the bow in the right place. So it'll slide down to, to the fingerboard, kind of telling you you are not bowing correctly. Or if, uh, if you're moving, if you're opening your arm out a little too much, then you'll see the bow jumping up on the bridge. Again, uh, your, your hand, your arm telling you you are not bowing correctly. So that's, um, again, this is a good exercise to use. to achieve that, and there will be a separate video about that too. Let's go on. So, um, you now have the balanced bow hold, you're able to draw parallel bows, and you're able to grow long, uh, you know, long and sustained, um, smooth bow strokes. Next thing, I try to use that long bow, long bow stroke. <laughs> pressure, some weight on the bow, just learning how to control it, you know? The pressure is applied mostly by my index finger and a little bit uh, the middle finger, yeah? And sometimes when I feel like I'm applying too much pressure, the ring finger, this one, I keep my ring finger right, right here, and this little nook of the bow right here. I don't put my fingers on the frog. I guess nothing wrong with it. I just, uh, it's not, it's just not my favorite position. You know, I don't like my fingers being on the frog actually, on, on this part. But in this little hole, little nook, my ring finger is here, and it, it can actually act as a lever when I am pushing too much with the other fingers. I can then pull the bow up a little with my ring finger like that as I'm pushing here and it creates this nice nice little balance uh, and weight on the bow I'm able to manipulate uh, the bow a little bit better so um, yes a very important thing the weight of your bow choice of the location of the bow you know between the bridge and the fingerboard will be different depending on what string you are on on a string I'm able to play really close to the, uh, to the to the bridge, sorry. Without pushing too hard, and I still get a good sound. I can't do that on G because the thicker string, you know, it'll get this falsetto sound from it. So um, progressively, you know, when I'm starting on G, I'm probably in about in the middle of bridge and the fingerboard. On D, I get a little closer. On A, a little closer. And when I get to E, to get a good sound, I can be, you know, really close to the, to the bridge. I prefer playing really close to the bridge. This is where the, you know, really um, the best sound is this kind of ringing quality of the sound. I get a little more texture there. Uh, a little more volume, again, not in terms of decibels, but just in terms of the feel of the sound. Yeah? Um, okay, what am I forgetting? What am I forgetting? Um, oh, yeah, the, the most important thing for me to achieve a good sound is to practice the pieces that I'm playing without vibrato. Vibrato, oh, so pretty, so beautiful, and it sometimes conceals, it, it can sometimes conceal uh, some deficiencies in your sound production, because it already makes it pretty enough, I guess, right? So, um, I'm going to play that uh, the little musical example that I played in the beginning of the, of the video, uh, The Vaults by Debussy. I'm going to play that without vibrato. difficult to get a good sound out of the violin without vibrato but if you can achieve that at least get a nice tone without vibrato then when you add the vibrato um, you will see the difference you're immediately sounding like a better violinist so um, just to summarize yeah balanced hold this is a must you have to achieve this before even thinking about the tone 
that's one. And then practice long bows, breathe with it, you know, make sure your body is in sync with what you're playing. Um, and then uh, apply a little bit. Wait once in a while just to feel like you're controlling the bow, practice like that. I would play closer to the bridge and practice with no vibrato, just very honest, clean, sincere sound. Hope this was um, helpful. Tone production is something that requires more than five or ten minutes and more than one or two teachers uh, or experts or whatever. Uh, it's something that you work for all your life. It's something that actually uh, really sets one violinist apart from the others. You know, um, I think three main components of music making are really, at least in uh, classical music or Western art music, I should say, are um, intonation, you yeah, have to play the right notes, rhythm, and tone production. You know, you have to have a good sound. If one of these things is missing, then uh, you're not there yet. So if you like the video, please subscribe and please click the like button. Uh, this was Henrik Karapetian at Violin Outside the Box with Dr. K. Thank you for watching.